Okay, I'm just going to be honest with you. This video is going to be a mess. I forgot my microphone. I forgot my headphones. I'm recording this at 6.48 in the morning, and I'm going to be honest with you. I think I drank the city of Seattle, Washington last night, but I promised I was going to recap every game, and I'm going to recap every single game. Mariners win 7-5. to five. They improve to 15, 16, and 17 on the year. I told you this is going to be a mess. They've won one straight, and they've given them the chance to take this series against those Houston Astros. Let's talk about how it happened. Not a lot happens for three innings. Fourth inning, Kyle Tucker does hit a sacrifice fly with the bases loaded to score Mauricio Dobon. Jeremy Pena, who just played an unreal game, singles in Jordan Alvarez to make it 2 0. Alvarez doubles home Jake Myers, and then Mauricio Dobon is thrown out at home. I'll talk about that play in a little bit. <clears throat> J.P. Crawford, the eighth inning. One of my favorite innings in a long time. J.P. Crawford doubles home three with the bases loaded to make it a 3-3 game. Jose Caballero comes in and doubles home two. Julio Rodriguez singles in a run to make it 6-3. And Jared Kelnick reaches. They called it an infield single. It was smoked, but the, the second baseman made a leaping dive to catch it. 7-3. In the ninth, Paul Seawalt gives up a couple of runs. These non-safe chances, man. This is becoming a pattern. <laughs> Doesn't really matter because they get the win. But uh, something to keep in mind for those fantasy folks. All right. I want to talk about the game because, first of all, shout out to my buddy Chris Royal who allowed me the chance to go into uh, his suite for the night. Um, a bunch of old high school friends, a bunch of people I've known for a very long time. I think I've known Chris since seventh grade. That yeah, was fun. It was really fun. And I thought the atmosphere was really impressive for a Saturday game, like the day after Cinco de Mayo. I thought that crowd was pretty darn impressive, and they stayed in it even while nothing happened for a very long time. Um, some negatives. There's quite a few. For seven innings, they got shut out by JP France, Phil Maton, and Hector Neris. Okay. Phil Maton and Hector Neris are solid relievers. Congratulations to J.P. France on a really strong first start. The offense did not look good. And some of that may have to do with the fact that they weren't prepared for the start. And I don't mean ill-prepared like... I want to sit, make sure I'm not saying this incorrectly. I'm not calling them... Um, What's the right way to say this? I'm not saying that it's hard to prepare for a first-time starter that you haven't seen. It is not a case of them just like being lazy and not doing their homework. It's just hard to do. There's just not a whole like a lot of tape. You can watch some, but it's not going to prepare you for what you're actually going to see. <sighs> Negatives, Nate. Marco Gonzalez was okay. I'll take that from him. If, if Marco wants to pitch six innings of three-run baseball against the Houston Astros, and that's what you tell me is going to happen every time, you take away the chance for a shutout, you take away the chance for the 10-run start, every time it's six innings of three-run baseball, sign me up. But it wasn't great. Command was much worse than it's been for most of the season. You know, it's worth pointing out he did come off a bad start. He's not exactly somebody I trust against really good lineups. I think that goes without being said, but I said it anyway. Uh, so Julio only gets the one hit. He scorched the baseball a couple of times. And what a play that was by Jeremy Pena to take away one of his hits. Really impressive. And Jeremy Pena is going to be a baller in this league for a long time. Do kids still say baller? Whatever. Um, Colton Wong leaving. I don't know if that was in fielding replacement or if that was injury. I'll have to look into that. It did look like he stayed on the ground for a little bit. Um, but over two again. It's really the only negatives. The positives are quite a few. Um, JP Crawford has just looked fantastic this year. I wish he was slugging at a higher percentage. I do. I wish the driving the baseball was more recurrent. But I'm going to take that with that 374 on base percentage. 
it's in that 340, 350 range and you're slugging around the same. That's that's not as fun. But a 374 slugging or 374 on base percentage, that's really good, folks. That's really good. Nice to see Ty France have a big game. Three for five. Didn't exactly crush the baseball. That's okay. Tom Murphy is swinging the bat much better. T. Oscar Hernandez, not such a great game, but that's okay. Cal Rowley with a couple of hits. Just a solid all-around game. Oh, and with the pitching. Uh, I thought Juan then for a major league debut against a really tough team. Wasn't exactly dominant, but got the job done through strikes. Taylor Soceto was really good. Really good in a key situation to keep the Mariners in the game at that point. And Seawalt gives up a couple of runs. But again, this is going to happen. He is going to throw strikes. Strikes, strikes, strikes. There's not going to be a lot of guesswork when he comes in with a big cushion. It's okay. Hurts the old ERA, but he gets the job done. Gets the job done. It's, uh, again, if you have him on your fantasy team, this can be frustrating. But he, because uh, you don't get even the save with it. You just get those, that one inning. He do get a couple strikeouts. So that's good. But I think you'd trade those strikeouts for some unearned runs, right? A 0-0 zero, zero ERA would be a little better than those two strikeouts. That eighth inning was really fun. And I was, of course, I was there, as you guys know. And I think one of the funnest things about it was, I think you saw what this team can be if everything goes right. I think you saw for seven innings what can go wrong. But I do think you saw for those in that eighth inning, scoring all those runs, you saw what, if if things go right, can happen. And the bottom of the order did the job. And it was great to see Julio uh, drive in some runs, and it was great to see Jared Kalnick drive in a run. But the bottom of the order got the job done, flat out. I wanted to talk about that play at the plate. I was surprised they overturned that. I'm not sure what people were saying on the old Twitter, but from my view, I don't know. I'm glad they did, but I was surprised that they overturned it. It was a heck of a relay. It was a one heck of a relay for Jared Kelnick made some defensive boo-boo, but that was a great throw and then an outstanding throw to the plate. So, so again, we'll see if this one is even listenable to. If you just want to skip this one, I understand. I am so tired. I have very little voice left. And again, if there's anything left to drink in the city, I'll be very surprised. But I had a really good time. And I've had a blast recording these videos. I can't hate it too much if I'm recording this at 6.56 in the morning right now. <laughs> I can't hate it too much, right? Like, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Crawford underscore M-I-L-B. I hope I didn't just do this for nothing. Because if it just sounds like um, some four-year-old's YouTube project, I'll probably scrap it and record it again. But... Maybe not. You get the best and the worst with me, folks. <laughs> Fun Mariner win. Oh, let's talk about real quick tomorrow, or exactly today. Exactly today? Is that a phrase? No. Um, you have got... Oh, that. My fun pitching matchup got ruined. It is uh, <laughs> Bryson Miller. Bryce Miller against Brandon Bialik. Bialik's a guy they should hit. I want to see him actually do it, too. And he got a fun three-game series again when he up against Texas. Really, really would like to see this team get a couple of series wins here before they start another road trip. But, yeah, I had fun last night. 
Hope you guys did too.